I love Linux, but recently I started to realize that not a lot of people actually want to install a new operating system. They just want to keep their old system and just add no, new features on top of it. Therefore, I started to recently recommend WSL to more people instead of Linux. WSL, or the Windows Subsystem for Linux, is a way to get a Linux-like environment or Unix-like environment on Windows. I'm going to show you how to install it. So first, you just want to just search up WSL uh, installation. This is the official Microsoft um, documentation to install Windows Subsystem for Linux. It is, again, for Windows, so Microsoft officially supports this. The first thing you want to actually do is enable the Windows Subsystem for Linux option. So to do this, all you just have to do is click this copy and paste and then can press on your keyboard, Windows Keys plus X. You will get this menu, and once you get this menu, you just want to click Power Windows PowerShell Admin. The admin part is important, so make sure to click it. Now you just want to click OK, and you should get this uh, blue-like uh, application. Now, just want to click Control-V and start, and just hit Enter. Um, the program will do its um, well, what it's intended to do and enable the uh, Windows Subsystem for Linux feature. It, it might take a while and you might have to restart your computer, but that is perfectly normal. So, there are two versions of the, uh, the Windows Subsystem for Linux. Well, there's the version 1.0 and version 2. Version 2 requires version 19.03 of a build of Windows 10. And version 1 requires 19, uh, 16, 1604, I believe. For this uh, tutorial, we're going to be installing uh, the Windows Subsystem for 2. And I recommend you to use it. There's a lot of features which I consider um, that were fixed by this version that, were, that appear in the first. Um, in order, one of the features that I... I always liked about the Windows Subsystem for Linux 2 is that you get a full Linux kernel. And the way uh, this is accomplished is by using HyperX or the virtual machine platform. And again, you're going to have to enable the system and you might have to restart your computer. But again, uh, the, it's, the way to do this is very simple. Just copy and then just go back to your PowerShell and then Control V. Um, Control -V. It will do the same thing as it did before. And you would just get it. You will. It will tell you when it's finished. The next step is just to download the Linux kernel package. You're going to want to hit this uh, link, and you should save the file into downloads or whatever directory you want. And once it's finished, you're going to be able to run the program. In my case, I already. Um, have the kernel installed but it shouldn't do much harm we're just going to go through installation and it's just gonna it's gonna update for me it's gonna update it but for you it's just gonna install the kernel and once you're done we just hit finish it shouldn't take that long the one the one of the the second to last step is to uh set wsl2 as your default version instead of the first one again let's go to your kernel and just hit two. Um, it might take a while, but you will just uh, whenever you run the command WSL, it will launch WSL two. The final thing you have to do in your install list is to actually choose a Linux distribution to run uh, the Windows Subsystem Linux with. There's a lot of options um, here. You can see. But I would recommend just installing Ubuntu. It's what a lot of people go with for their first Linux distribution. Is the one I recommend. So you just want to go open your Microsoft Store and just search Ubuntu. Um, so I already have this product, but normally all you want to do is just inst uh, click Get and then install. Once you have, for the purposes of the video, I have already installed this. Uh, but once you finish installing, you will want to search 
on your search menu, Ubuntu, or launch it. Uh, then you will get this screen, like the pop-up that says installing. This may take a few minutes. There's nothing to worry about. Um, this should take no, no, it shouldn't really take a long time. Okay, now that it finishes uh, installing um, everything that it needs to, we can finally hit and uh, enter a new Unix uh, username. For this tutorial, I'm going to uh, enter Mars. And now you hit a new password. This is just going to be the password for your um, user, in this case, Mars. Uh, so whenever, if you're new to Linux, you're not going to be able to, uh, you might not know this, but whenever you type in a password, you're not going to see your password being typed, but it is there. So f I'm just going to hit, I'm just going to enter a password. And once I do that and enter the same password twice, I should get this new, um, command prompt. So the first thing you want to do is sudo apt get update, and now hit your pa like enter your password. This would just update um, all the repositories, um, your system with all the new repositories, with the old uh, updates it needs uh, using the Ubuntu Foco updates repository. This may take a while, but um, it should, but you only need to do this once, to be honest. And now that it's done, you can finally start installing uh, packages. So if you're going to be on this a lot, I would recommend um, installing well in any text um, text uh, text editor you would like, and whatever you need. Uh, for the purpose of this video, I'm going to show you how to just install NeoVim in uh, the GNU compilers collection so we can make some we can run some C code and we're just downloading this uh, NeoVim and uh, GCCC from our, repos our Ubuntu repositories it's going to unpack and once it's done we can finally use it. And again, the benefits of using w, the WSL is that you do have a Unix environment. So, GTC should work as, expect, as you would expect in a uh, Unix in, in a Unix system. Okay, now that we're done, we can finally make a C program. Just I'm just going to make a C program to demonstrate that this works. So of course you want your include, dude. Um, now we're just making a simple C program. And for some reason I, uh, sim the most simplest hello world you expect. And we're just going to have return zero, and that should be it. And now that we've done it, we can finally run main C and I'll put it. There we go. Hello world. And we can do a less anything you would expect from a Unix environment, honestly. And that's it. That's all I have to show you. Goodbye.